Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is video about Snowman Sky, the game that you were asking me about. Uh, quite a, like quite a few of you have actually been asking me what I think about the game and uh, do I like it? Do I play it? And uh, you know what kind of opinion do I have about the latest update that they've released recently, which is the No Man's Sky Next. So I thought I would just um, show you a bit of gameplay, talk about the game and talk, uh, tell you basically my thoughts um, about the game itself and the problems that it actually has. So the video is going to be titled No Man's UX because this game has some serious problems with user experience and uh, we're going to talk about them. I'm going to show you all of that stuff um, in its in its order, basically, right? So let's talk about what No Man's Sky is first for those of you who don't really know about it. So No Man's Sky is a space exploration game that is built purely around procedural generation. So all of the stuff that you see around me is generated procedurally and uh, all of that is basically a function from the coordinate. I think, the, or I mean, I'm pretty sure there are some tricks to make it work and to make it not boring because, you know, if it will be purely procedural and purely random, it will get very boring very quick. So they used a bunch of tweaks and, you know, the longer the game was released, um, the more sort of um, tweaked and the more refined it became, right? Because in the very beginning, it was a very bland and shallow game. And let's talk about the release date. So the game released in 2016. And at the time, um, it, it actually didn't include majority of the features that were shown in the trailers and were promised by the developers, which was kind of outrageous. And a lot of people hated the game for this, uh, me including. I've bought it, I've played it and refunded it within like, I think, one and a half hour or something. So it was not very good. Like this literally was features missing and even Steam was offering refunds at the time. So um, now, two years later, they released No Man's Sky Next, which basically finally adds all the features they were promised, including multiplayer. Uh, by the way, I should know that I am playing the GOG version of the game, which was uh, given to me by GOG folks for free to do this video, uh, thanks to them. One small note, if you are buying this game on GOG, do not expect multiplayer. It is not there yet. I have no idea why, because the uh, Hello Games has their own server. So I'm not sure why they just didn't build the multiplayer into all copies. But apparently it's coming to GOG later at some point. Like hell if I know. But yeah, um, so this is GOG version and uh, it has everything aside from multiplayer. And you know, now there's a lot of things to do. And there's a proper storyline because in initial release, there was kind of something like a storyline i yeah i don't know it was like weird thing that you just go through and kind of get um sort of what's happening but there was you know it was just bad let's let's put it this way this time around there's actually a lot of quests a lot of um like three actual paths that you can go through here i won't show them to you because this is kind of spoilers so you have the Atlas Pass where you just search for answers. You have the Space Anomaly Pass where you just go to the sea, uh, to the center of the universe. And you have the Traveler Quest which, where you basically discover who are the travelers, who you are and what the, what the hell happens. And I have a billion of secondary missions that basically uh, tell you to do things for people to get rewards. So like here we have um, Destroy Sentinels mission. We have destroyed three sentinels. Might as well try to do that. So I got my uh, shotgun over here. That should be relatively easy to kill him. Okay, that gun is pretty powerful. Come on. Yeah, so you can pick up the missions. Whoops, I am out of ammo. We should reload. And um, you can do them. That will net you some rewards. And basically the reward, like the target of all of it is still to, you know, travel from planet to planet and discover things. Gonna wait for reinforcements to kill a bunch of more of those guys. And uh, now let's talk about the user experience in the game. So you have those sentinels, which are supposed to be sort of protectors or whatever interference, right? So they should stop you from doing bad things. But in reality, they're just an annoyance. So like I'm having this quest, right? I'm farming those guys. So I'm gonna shoot him in the face like this and I'm gonna reload my gun and shoot him a couple more times, he's gonna die, right? So I'm gonna mine those uh, canisters that they drop that will net me some uh, nice loot because this loot, like there's some loot that can only be received from those guys. And um, the thing is that I may be look like, okay, you know, I killed three of them, I actually need five, I think. So there's gonna be a bigger guy coming right now. 
There's the fly guys. Uh, where's the doggy? I don't see him. Okay, well, you know what? Let's kill those guys first. Um, but the thing is, they are absolutely harmless, right? So, like, yeah, they, they do hurt you. They have this stuff going on. So we should pick up this canister before these years. But there's a building. So I just walk into here. And they just lose me. That's it. That's, that's literally all you have to do to lose them. Um, like... You can, you can even, you know, not even doing that, you can just jump into your spaceship and fly into the space. and Or not into the space, actually, you cannot fly into the space. But you can fly, just, you know, lift off the planet and just float for a few seconds and they will lose you. Which, like, it's just silly. And then <laughs> there's this incredible bug. I don't know, like, why it still hasn't been addressed in two years. But if you have Sentinels on you, if you go into space... There will be a sentinel spaceships, right? So they actually have a spaceships and the spaceships will attack you. And uh, if you are not careful enough, if you actually jump into your ship and go into a space with sentinel threat, um, you cannot lose them there. Like the only way to lose them is actually to dock into a space station and you cannot uh, warp. So that's like if the space station is like, you know, two years away from you, then it will take you two years to go there. So... In this case, okay, space station is pretty close, so we're now going off from the planet. Um, yeah, as you can see here, they've added the freighters, so you actually you now actually have a pretty huge freighters, and you can buy them and you can manage them, and it's it's all really neat. You can actually land on them if you want to walk around. Although you know the smaller ones uh, literally don't have anything. It's just when you send them to missions, you actually um, have to repair them sometimes because they might break during the mission, depending, you know, if it's a military mission or whatever. So we're going to go to the um, mission agent here to give in the quest. Um, let, yeah, let's talk about this pulse engine. So you have the pulse engine that, you know, may, brings you faster to your destination. So the thing is that I've, I've actually modded my game quite severely because there is a lot of, as I said, user experience problems, right? So one of them being this pulse engine. It is incredibly slow. So... Sometimes when you lift off the planets and you look at the solar system, you see the planets quite far away, right? So there, there is a time when the planet might be like, I don't know, five or ten minutes uh, off. No, I don't think I've seen any any planets ten minutes off, but it's literally like five minutes on hyperdrive, like so on this on this jump thing, right? Why is this a thing? Like I don't want to fly five minutes through space and look at the just I'm wasting my time, right? So why can't it be faster? Well, the thing is it can, and there is a mod that makes it faster. Why wasn't it faster in the first place? I don't know. Like, it's been two years, and Hello Games still didn't really do anything about that. So, um, yeah, it just feels a bit weird. Um, so I'm going to... I'm going to show you the cool bit. So there's now base building and your own uh, spaceship, uh, like space fleet, basically. So we're going to go to my main base. I called main world and I have two main worlds because apparently if you build the base computer, uh, you can still build the second one in the same place, but you cannot remove the second one. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit stress. There's like, it, it feels like a Bethesda game at this point because on one hand, there's so much really cool things happening. You know, there's like the exploration, the whole sort of discovery aspect is really awesome there's like the closer you go to the center of the the world the crazier the random uh, the, the procedural gener generation gets the crazier things you will see the crazier plants the crazier uh, animals and it's really cool on the other hand there's so many little annoying things and bugs that it just breaks all the enjoyment so yeah here we go there's um there's my tiny base i uh, do grow some plants here i have my small uh, transport things over here. I have my like guys who I can talk to, they do research for me, so on and so forth. And uh, right there in the sky, you can see my capital ship. So we can actually, um, yeah, that's, first let's talk about base. So base building is actually quite okay. The only problem I have with it is that you see this like super huge storage containers. Well, if you actually open it, you will see that it has like five slots. Why is that a thing? I don't know, but um, yeah, that that's the that's thing, so. Uh, luckily enough, you can actually uh, transfer stuff directly from your inventory to storage containers nearby, which is nice. But um, on the other hand, you there's no way to look at all of them 
in one sort of go, right? So you have to you have to look one by one. Well, you can transfer it there, but then you, if you if you need to find something, you have to go and like, okay, I'm looking this container, I'm gonna look in this container, and it is. Plus, you have this animation of you know opening the UI, and it's all like <laughs> it takes ages to do. Basically, it's just a bit annoying. Um, but yeah, it's like just it's sort of nice base. You know, I I built this thing completely in the wrong place, so I can, it's hard to jump up here. Uh, I even have a trade terminal here, so you know you can buy and sell stuff. Um, the cool thing about the new version is that actually you don't really need to farm too much. You can actually just um, buy and sell. So like you can you can you know uh, do discovery essentially and find some nice things. Like I have those. Uh, where's my cubes? No, this is buy right. Where's my sell? Anyway, so I have these vortex cubes. They are worth like seventeen thousand. It's not that much, but it's you know it's quite good. So I'm gonna sell this, I'm gonna get some money. And if I wanna do something instead of just, you know, farming and creating it, I just can go ahead and straight up buy whatever I need, like launch fuel or metal plating or whatever, like majority of, of things are actually sold in the markets. It might be not this specific market, but you can find them. So I like this addition. Um, now let's talk about the Transport. So in addition to your spaceship, which you used to have uh, a lot of time, you now have your exocraft. There's like three things. So you got the buggy, you got the hovercraft, and you got this big uh, Colossus thing, which is, yeah, I haven't even tried it yet, but it looks pretty neat. Um, now all of them have different upgrades and different installable things. I think buggy is my favorite because it's just simply the fastest and you know, it has basically all you need. So you have the scanner pulse and everything and you can mine right from it if you want to. Uh, whoops, and the Sentinel is now angry with me. Please go away. I don't want to fight you. Okay, and the thing is that I was like, okay, so I did the quest on, on getting those Exocraft, right? I was like, okay, cool. So now I can actually summon Exocraft anywhere, right? Because you have the summon button. So you can summon vehicles, you can summon your spaceship if you want to, you can summon Exocraft, and you can summon freighter, but that's only done basically in space, we can actually summon it right here, which is really awesome. I didn't know, you know what, let's try. That is like this is the part of game that I really like the other like the annoying things is just the okay so you can summon exocraft in the same way I thought okay you know awesome so now I have this exocraft and uh, I'm actually riding around the planet right and the thing is that having exocraft and riding around the planet like this actually changes the gameplay and the way that you explore the planets quite a bit because now you are no longer limited to slow flying around and you know trying to find something cool but you can actually ride around and you will discover a lot more things um like this so it is way better to explore on exocraft and i think i've already been here judging by this thing so i thought okay you know i would go to another planet i would call my exocraft and just ride around and find cool things in there um right so it sounds sounds easy and um you have, yeah, you have, you have jumps on this. It's like, it can jump, it can have turbo and stuff. Uh, but yeah, so the problem with it is that to call an exocraft on a different planet, you literally have to build a new exocraft bay there, which is quite damn expensive. So if, if I go out now and if I uh, pull up the build console, so you can see that I have my exocraft modules, right? And if I wanna build the simple one roamer, so this is the buggy, I need five metal plating, four ion battery, and 100 paraffinium. Those are not extremely expensive materials, but it still would take me quite some time to farm them, which is really annoying. Like, and, and at this point, I don't really see any point in Exocraft because why would I ride around my home base? Like, what, like I guess, you know, it's really cool. You can do that. It's fun and everything. By the way, the speed of my Exocraft is also boosted with mods because default speed was too slow, like literally too slow. You you could, it took you ages to drive anywhere and it consumes fuel like crazy. So I would also want a mod that basically um, reduces the fuel consumption, but I haven't seen one yet. So I like, yeah, it's just weird balancing issues basically. And it's still, you know, it's even more crazy that it's not been addressed two years on because the moment that I went to the forums to search for something like this, there is hundreds of people complaining about exactly the same thing. And it's just crazy. Okay, so let me show you the space fleet and uh, we'll talk a, a bit more about sort of annoying um, user experience mechanics in this game, right? So. 
Let's go up uh, where's our freighter it was right here in the atmosphere so we actually don't need to go too far so we can just fly up and I, again i really like this this sort of the fact that you can literally do that and that's my little freighter the mining freighter that I, I i have that you can send on missions i think it's just returned from another one of the missions so we can go into the freighter and we can go to the control panel and uh Here's the weird thing. So like you you build the control panel or like you can build the control modules in the freighter. So freighter is actually your base, right? So you can build additional stuff in here. But there is no way to communicate with the freighter or captains or anything from outside. So like you have you have this menu, right? And if you are in a space, which again is another annoyance, you, you have the communication menu that you can sometimes get hailed and you can answer to those hails and you can talk to random NPCs. Like here we have this communication module uh, fleet command, right? So you can command your fleet. So we can debrief him from the old mission and we're gonna see the whole like what happened. So they acquired 26,000 of uh, units, some chloride lattice, uh, some herox, some granite, and that's it. So we end the expedition and uh, we got all of this stuff into the freighter inventory i believe yeah there we go so those are well uh, this seems to be relatively expensive and this seems to be relatively expensive as well so you know it's a, it's an okay expedition i guess for one star one but i don't really have like my freighter cannot tackle any better because it's a garbage freighter essentially i think we can try to do the two star um, expedition as you can see here expedition take time in, so those duration two hours 30 minutes it's a real time so actually uh, started and then you have to wait for this time until it finishes why is this a thing i don't know i guess because it wants you to sort of not farm the resources too fast maybe it's like i i'm not sure it's just also this tiny annoying Bit. I mean, it's a single player game, right? So why would I have to wait for those things to finish? And again, you know, I don't mind waiting a bit to say like, you know, hey, freighter is going to another system. So it's going to take like 20, 30 minutes to finish the expedition, right? No, it sometimes takes two, two and a half, three hours, four hours, and even more. Um, right, there's another aspect. So you can change ships right you can you can just go to any alien ship that you see and you can say hey i want the ship make an offer right and then you can see what the ship is and you can negotiate price and you can buy it or exchange it so you can now ha have more than one ship actually which is pretty neat um the problem is if you are looking for an upgrade you have to go to some place and there's some weird artifacts happening i think that's the atmosphere getting into our freighter so if you want to upgrade the ship, you have to go to some place that has a lot of ships like a uh, space station or uh, ground trading posts or something among those lines, right? And you have to um, sit there for random amount of time and basically click on each and every ship to figure out if this is something that you like so there's no centralized market for ships and and there's no easy way of getting the ship right by the way the speed of the boost that i have right now is also boosted by mods because it was so slow it would take you a couple of minutes to go from planet to planet and then within the planet like you know to fly around i like i i have no idea why they opted in for those solutions it's just painful and then again you know this is the literally highest downloaded uh, like the mode with highest download count and it's obvious that people want that but it's not in the game uh, another thing is this scanner you see i'm pulsing it off right so this actually will show you the points of interest at least the um the spaceship will show the largest ones and um by default the scanner has a uh, like 20 30 second delay before you can use it again for some reason like there is literally no gameplay reason to limit it this way but it's just it's, it's like it's so weird you know on, on one hand this game has so many like pretty neat things like for example the way that i acquired my freighter i think there was uh more capital ship that was scripted for sure but um, when I warped into one of the systems, the freighter was actually attacked by pirates. So I, I fought the pirates and I cleaned all of them out. There was quite a bunch of them. And then the freighter contacted me and was like, okay, so, uh, you know, we are not really interested in, in, in doing this alone anymore. Do you want to 
have our fader. I was like, yeah, sure, let me get it. That was really awesome. And uh, again, there are random events. So if, if I'm flying like this through the uh, asteroids, which is by the way, annoying, there's so many of them, uh, there might be pirates who might come in and just, you know, some bounty target just warp in. Or maybe there is someone scanning me and then they detect something valuable on my spaceship and they go like, aha, uh -huh, you got some valuable stuff. So I'm going to warp in and demand it from you. And if you don't give it to us, we're going to kill you. And you have to dogfight. Right. So another uh, thing is that you have the galaxy map, right? So you can warp anywhere you want. And there's like the, um, the way it's done is basically you have... So we have this quest quest location. Um, how do I swap? I always forgetting. Current mission. No, this is not what I want. Free explore. Um, yeah, that's what we want, right? I think. Yes, quest. No, this is quest for the star. What was the quest that I I had to deliver something if I remember correctly? But hell, if I know where was it? Um, leave. Let's have a look at the best objectives um there was a delivery mission there we go heavy payload this is what we want right uh so another another annoyance here is that you have the galaxy map but for whatever reason you can only open it from the from the space right so you cannot look at the stars from the current location that is quite damn far away and i probably should warp uh, to another to another location. So the cool thing is that there are now teleports and we can go to our base over there and uh, we can use a teleport to go into a different space station that I already visited. So once you visit, you sort of unlock the quick travel points and you can then quickly hop between them and conveniently enough, your ship just travels along with you. I still don't understand why Exocraft doesn't. <laughs> But as you know, that's a different question. Maybe there will be a next next update that will finally fix this, but we'll see. So it's like all the props to the Hello Games for not stopping developing this game, even though they did an absolutely crazy thing at launch and it was not nice, but you know, now it's way better. Right, so let's see, I think, I think, so there's the current system. I think this was, I think they're sorted by time. So basically this should be the system that I wanna go into. We're gonna go there. Um, I also want to know the performance. Like on a PC, it's okay-ish. Sometimes you get those, you know, sort of laggy spikes. You probably will see them, a couple of them in the video on the loading screens, especially. Uh, but in the majority of time, you know, I have everything cranked up to the max, and it's it's okay, right? It's not like 144 FPS as I would want on my monitor, but it works fine. Right. So let's go and see. Here's another, you know, you can consult the space map, but yeah, I can't, I have to go out. So if I, if I go out, I now can open the space map and check out where exactly do I need to go. And uh, I'm still too far away. So you need to, um, we need to actually, yeah, that is, where the hell is that thing? Wait a second, that is, what, what, how the, wait, how far is this thing? That's, why the mission I picked up, I think. Is that the correct way? Am I, am I actually, no, this is the quest for the stars. I, I, okay, I just jumped to the next system. So I'm not actually that far away. I think I picked the wrong portal, but that's that's also another problem, right? So instead of, of um, sort of seeing the, uh, again, user experience problem. So once you open the portal, you only see the names of the bases. You cannot open the star map to check out where those stations are. So you don't know where to jump. And uh, here comes a cool ship. That's our chance to check it out and see if we can maybe upgrade to it because I have nearly 4 million. It should be a decent upgrade um, if it's what we want and if it's affordable. So this is like, yeah, this is one of those really annoying bits. 36 slots is probably expensive as hell. Yeah, 25, why? I believe the prices and stats on those ships are also randomly generated. So sometimes you see a lot of like bullshit. It is, yeah, it's like, um, yeah, of course you have all those aliens. Uh, now, by the way, you have also travelers. So you can actually talk to them and uh, offer them nanites, for example, or uh, different things. So I think this typically gives you money. And uh, there's the guilds. I think this is the local merchant guild. I don't know if they want to talk to me. Um, 
Okay, so they give me the mission. I don't want your mission for now. So those are the mer merchant guilds. This is the typical quest giver for the current faction. So you can browse the missions. There's like, you know, collect stuff, take photos, which is, I think, pretty neat. Uh, kill sentinels, collect other things. Um, it's, yeah, it's mostly like, you know, repair, collect. And then if you want the cooler missions, you have to farm the prep missions to get the standing. So this one requires you to be the journeyman with Merchant's Guild. I don't think, like, I don't even know what my standing is, actually. I, I did some missions, but um, Merchant's Guild, there we go. I am Initiate, so okay. Not too terrible, but, you know, not very good. So with Mercenaries, I am unknown. With uh, Explorers, I'm also unknown. So basically, you farm experience to get better missions, to farm more stuff, to, you know, trade and, and everything, like... On one hand, it's really cool that there are so many ways to play this game. On the other hand, it's like there is just so many little annoying things that are... That could have been fixed. In two years, they definitely could have been fixed. I don't know why have, why they weren't. Like, I still enjoy playing this game as a very chill game. You know, once I get really frustrated and annoyed by things, I just typically shut it down and go play Warframe or something. But... As a sort of relaxing experience where you just hop from a system to system, you know, discover new things, look around and just grab whatever you can, try to sell it, try to get a new cooler ship. It's pretty fun. So if, if that sounds like, you know, you're um, something that you would enjoy, then I would say that, yes, at this point, No Man's Sky is actually worth buying. If that does not sound like something you would enjoy, then well, maybe wait a few more major patches. I am hoping they, in no man, um, sorry, Hello Games won't stop updating it and they will, like, <laughs> the funniest thing is literally, they could have gone to the modding place, like the, the Nexus mods for it. They could have taken the top rated mods and just incorporated them into the game. And that already would improve the game like tenfold. Why they didn't do it, I don't know. But that, that's like... <laughs> That is the silliest thing ever. But I still enjoy my time with it. Like I played like 15 hours to get to this point and I think I'm gonna finish the at least main storyline. I don't know about the side quests. From time to time it's fun. Like the combat is very basic, but you know, it's it's passable. The space battles is also passable. But then again, the mix of everything is what makes it uh, enjoyable, right? Because you can, you know, you can switch from one activity to another and that sort of mixes it and just feels nicer right and now that um if you are willing to fight with a couple of bugs doing the quests that's also okay right so it's, it, as i said it feels very bethesda like um because of all the bugs it has so yeah no man's sky um i mean it's it's okay you know if you enjoy games like this it's definitely not elite dangerous but it does have its own like interesting sides i would say um Make your own mind about it. I would not say, you know, I completely recommend it or completely not recommend it. I would say it highly depends on you. But yeah, this is basically No Man's Sky. Thank you for watching and I see you next time. Bye.